you have a brilliant idea. Everyone has a brilliant idea. And uh, the, 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 as soon as you realize you have this brilliant idea, I bet the first thing you're thinking is, this is going to be successful. Everyone's going to love this. I know I'm right. This solution is going to make a difference to everyone that's ever had this problem. Let's move full speed ahead and don't look back. Let's go. Everyone's going to want this. Um, either you've experienced this before or if you've heard other people with similar, uh, similar type of comments. Um, and you know, in other industries, that might, that might work. If you have a good product that you can make, you know how to make it, you know people want it, you can just go sell it, right? But the healthcare industry is a different, is a different beast in its, own, in its own right. So in the healthcare industry, uh, you need to stop and slow down. Validate your assumptions. Um, running on those emotional fumes, the excitement of what's going to happen uh, is, is great to keep things moving. But remember that really understanding the market, understanding your, your place and the product and what you're going to do with that is valuable to move things forward. Exploring your mountains and valleys, looking at your product from different angles, you know, starting with that big picture and then focusing in on the, the different parts of it. Um, and a couple of key things to mention up front is solving a real clinical need. You'll hear this unmet need portion come up regularly throughout the presentation today. Um, are you solving a need that is present in the clinic today, is present in the OR today, present in the um, uh, treatment suites today? And um, are you understanding your patient population and how they fit together with that need? And considering barriers, barriers to adoption, that's a jargon right there. What are the things that could go wrong or the things that you need to work through in order to be successful? And thinking about all of the different aspects of your, um, of your product development process and of the marketplace to better understand what you need to do to be successful. And let's, um, we'll talk about a few examples and um, reasons why or, or, or um, large organizations that tried to do things and failed because they didn't know all of the pieces. And it's, it's hard to know everything that's going to be involved in understanding your landscape, but, but here, we'll just give you some examples. So first one, um, inhaled insulin. Sounds like a great idea, right? You're avoiding injection. There's a huge diabetic market. You know, there's the, one of the billions from the market size perspective. Um, this product called Exubra was developed by Pfizer and, and Nectar Therapeutics. Um, the uh, interesting story here is that although patients were interested in having an inhaled insulin product, um, the, the language on the website said that the patients thought it looked like a bong and were not interested in using it. Um, there were some other disadvantages as well. Um, it was just unwieldy and hard to manage. Um, they ended up having some clinical issues related to lung function, which caused a bigger problem for the, the product, but, but just thinking how comfortable is the patient when they're using this product? Do they feel good about using the product? And is it a situation where they, um, they can um, almost look forward to their therapy through the experience? So this product was forecast to, um, to bring in about $1.5 billion. And when they discontinued it, they ended up at about $4 million per quarter is where they were at. And they took a $2.8 billion write-off for not selling this product anymore. So they had a big hit for their organization for this product. Um, the next one, which is super cool, I have to say, the robotic wheelchair. I've seen one of these, uh, given that I worked at j, &J I saw one in person work uh, walking upstairs. Um, this this um, is a wheelchair which allows um, people that are mobil mobility impaired to be able to get up staircases, which mobility is a huge unmet need in that mark in that um, patient population. So you can see the value in that. Um, this was developed by um, Dean Kamen, who you know from the Segway and some other um, technology that, that he developed and put in place. Um, the issue was this, is that with this one, is that they, they charged um, $26,100 for this wheelchair, which people that are on Medicaid can't afford to pay out of pocket. Medicaid decided that there wasn't enough unmet need for this pop patient population to reimburse $26,000 for this wheelchair. And so the product was discontinued because of the poor sales. They couldn't, um, they couldn't continue to be profitable with the organization by selling this product. So um, 
you know, these are our big organizations. Um, like I said, Johnson Johnson was involved and Dean Kamen, you know, big funder, big successes in other areas. Um, but, you know, things happened with regard to the product that, um, you know, that we'll talk about it today are things that you need to consider when you're thinking about um, developing your product.